shall do for me. Will somebody say amen? The word to anoint. Here we go. The word anointed means to smear in or to rub. And I like what God said. Everything, everything that the devil has tried to conjure against you. He'll try to smear you. The devil will try to smear your name. Amen. Come on, it's the truth. He'll try to, he'll try to destroy you in, in different facets of your life a little bit at a time. God said, but when the anointing comes, He said, it'll smear the devil. Amen. And, it, and then I thought about, I like this, and I got this early this morning. It's just a simple word, but I give God the praise. And then He said, it means to smear or to rub. And He said, the anointing will always rub the devil the wrong way. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. And see what the devil does is he comes and he, he, he wants to, to, to twist around you. He's that serpent. We was in here one time and I'd heard about the spirit of python, which is a form of a spirit. And, and I didn't really know if it existed or not. I'd heard about it. To me, they're just all devils. We'll just cast them out. And we was in here years ago, and we were praying on a Saturday morning. And we had prayer meeting for a while. You remember, it's been years ago. That's when I, that's before I ever had my heart attack and died and come back. And when we were preaching and, and teaching about the move of God and the power of God, listen, and we, that, that morning I could see in my spirit this serpent going away, and he had been cut into ribbons, into slices, into pieces, because that's what the anointing had done to that spirit. And that spirit will wrap around you. It'll make you, it'll try to keep you. It'll try to back you up. It'll try to make you feel like this or make you feel bad or try to draw you away from God. It'll suck the very life. It's just like a cold viper. or I mean, I mean like a cold serpent. It'll suck the very life out of you. But I want you to know today, but because of the anointing, if you'll release that anointing in your life, he won't be able to hang on to you. There's a lot of things I want to talk about. The word anoint has other words. Number one, you have been consecrated. Glory to God. It doesn't mean that we're better than other people. But I'm just going to tell you right now, I mean, I love everybody, but I'm not going to be partakers of their sins, no matter how much they want me to. Even if somebody offers me a day of pleasure and I've got something with God that I need to do, I'm not going to choose that day of pleasure. I'm going to choose God. Listen, and so are you. Because you've been con to anoint means that you have been consecrated. What does that word mean? You have been set apart. Pharisees took it too far. The Pharisees and the Sadducees and the lawyers and the scribes, they took it too far. God said, I set you apart so that you can draw people to me through the anointing. It's the anointing of God. It's the, it's the, it's the oil of God. It's, the, it's not a vial of oil, but you've been anointed like David with a horn of oil. Amen. And you've been anointed to go about doing good and healing all that are oppressed of the devil. I watched this preacher one time in a service, and I don't know if he mixed water with oil, but he, there was this person that came up, and it was the person looked normal at first, but he poured, <laughs> glory be to God, I tell you, God's got the power. He poured, listen, he poured oil, and this oil, it, there's no anything special about this oil, but when you use it, when God tells you to do it, and you're obedient to use it like the Word says, it becomes an incredible weapon against the forces of hell. They can't stand it. And He poured oil on this woman, and she began to manifest the devil in her, and she began to cry out, I'm burning! You're burning me! And He said, that's right, come out of her. Because there's just something about it power of God and, 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 and to be clean to know that you're clean is a great feeling to know that God has chosen you and you are a clean vessel not because you're good not because you deserve it but because of the blood of the Lamb God has seen you and is consecrated my God you ought to shout Amen you have been consecrated you have been set apart because of the anointing can somebody shout Amen in this place and then you've been blessed above all people upon the face of the earth. You've been blessed. Now, listen. 
It's not the stature of a person. It has nothing to do with how much. Listen to me. I hope you're listening because Satan will use all these things. It's not your, your name. It's got nothing to do with your name or how much money you have or the stature of a person. And all these has nothing to do, nothing to do with the anointing. Because when Samuel came to all of David's kids, David was nowhere to be found, but he was the one that was out tending the sheep, Brother Gillis. He was the one, Brother Harold, out there that was praising God and worshiping God. And that's what you and I need to do. That's what we need to do when we're not in the house of God. We need to take time and spend time with God. And, and you know what? I heard the Lord tell me last night, and I thought about that song that Frida sung. as I, He said, your cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord, the Lord God forever and ever, the anointed King of glory. We're going to live with Him forever and ever and ever, somebody. And we'll see Him face to face because of the anointing. The word that I want to use that I began to study, I didn't even know it tied in, but it does. Another word for the anointing is blessed. You were blessed. You are so blessed. Stay with me now. Stay with me. You are blessed. You are in that way, the anointing. That, that word doesn't mean, well, I, I know I'm blessed. People say, I know I'm blessed. I've, I've, God's blessed me with things. No, no, that's not what that word. You have been empowered by God to prosper against the enemy. You've been empowered by the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. John said, there is one that cometh after me whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire not long hence from now. And God said in his word to tell you today everybody hear this preacher you have been empowered to prosper by the hand of God all because of the anointing of God hallelujah you've been given power wonder working power and it's the anointing you've been ordained by God when I left the football game yesterday I got around Lord I never said I was too busy hollering at Gabriel and Telling Gabriel to hit him and telling Gabriel to run him down. But the anointing was still there. But when I got up in front of a bunch of people, one of them said something to me. I said, well, God's good whether we win or whether we lose. I said, he's good all the time. I quoted Gillis. It come out of me because it's on the bit. The anointing hit them. They all like went, oh, wow. But we don't care. Don't ever worry about what people think about you. It doesn't matter. That's not who you're going to answer to anyway. But do you know, look at me, I'm, I'm, I'm about done. Bear with me, i got ten more minutes, I'm done. Do you know that you, I'm looking at you, that you are the greatest conduit of change because who lives on the inside of you? You're the conduit. I don't think you understood what I said. I said you are the greatest conduit of change. People will say, preacher, why? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost and so do you. Why has there not been change? Why is this not happening? Because maybe the conduit is not conduiting. There's four things, five things, maybe even six. But number one, the anointing is slippery. Slippery. I mean slippery. There's only been a certain amount of time that I've ever heard the voice of God tell me to pour oil on somebody's head. There's a, there's a, and there's a, there's a lot of I learned early about the anointing early. That oil can ruin things too if it's used in the wrong way. I know a guy one time in the church years ago. He just was really out there. He was in our church, and he anointed everything. It was brand new carpet, brand new everything. He anointed everything, but little did he know everything the anointed became stained. Boy, my preacher was hot, boy. So you have to also use the wisdom of God. My point is you can't operate in the anointing all the time because if you try to, you'll become stained. You can't walk in that anointing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but it's there when it's needed. Now I want to show you something that every one of you need to be. Yesterday, and this was a great analogy, yesterday I was out on the lake with my wife, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my little boy, and we pulled up to this marina that I have never knew existed. And over on the side, I hear my little boy holler, Dad, look at all these fish. 
Come on, I'm going somewhere. Listen to me, don't lose me. And I walked over and I saw a few carp there swimming on top of the water. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go get me some bread. Watch this. Hey, come on, somebody. I'm going to go get me some bread. So I got some bread. We went to this marina twice. So when I, got, I just got a little bit of bread and I fed it to him. Well, one became ten. Ten became twenty. Twenty became forty. So we left, but then we came back. And when we come back, I couldn't even see one. It didn't matter what I saw because you know what? I knew that if I could stir up their hunger. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, I feel something now. I said I knew that if I could just cast that bread out there on the water, that eventually they would begin to come again. So I took three pieces of bread. One from the Father, one from the Son, and one from the Holy Ghost. And then I looked, Brother Gillis, and hanging on the thing, they had carp feed. You know, those things you turn like bubble gum machines, you got to put a quarter in it. Man, I mean, I hadn't done it. I inundated them. I threw the carp out there. I threw the bread. And 40 becomes 60. And God said, you know what, son? He said, that's just like the anointing. He said, the anointing and hunger go together. Hunger and the anointing go together. He said, praise God. He said, I want you to tell my church. He said, I want you to tell them that if they're hungry, they'll be anointed. But if they're not hungry, then the anointing won't be there like it. My God, that's good, isn't it? It won't be there. My God, will you stand up and say, God, I'm hungry this morning. There's power, listen, in the anointing. And then I ran out of food. Now I want, I want to show you. I didn't have nothing else to give them. I'd run out. Well, where was somebody else? God said, you're not the only one that needs to be feeding my people. There was nobody, but there was nobody else on the, Gabriel had already fled. He'd gone back to the boat. But he made a great point to me. And you know what? And even though that I'd fed them all that, they were still on top of the water, 40 of them. I mean, looking out of the, their eyes are out of the water and them lips on them cart going. They were hungry still, see. Somebody's got to have the anointing. See, somebody's got to give them what they need. There's got to be somebody, and you're that somebody. It didn't matter. And here's what God, and this is the greatest part. He said, you know something, son? He said, when they get hungry, he said, and you feed them, then they become even more hungry for more. My God, that's good. Will somebody raise your hand and say, I'm anointed. The anointing of God this morning. I'm about done. It's sticky. I remember one time I got super glue on my fingers. Now it didn't stick where I didn't have to go to the hospital. I heard about one guy. He stuck something on his tongue and put uh, like a dummy and put some kind of glue, and he he had to go get it cut off his tongue. I remember reading about that, but I'm not dumb like it. But my point is, is the anointing you can't get it off of you once it's on. You don't want it off of you. And God, here's the analogy that He gave me. Remember when you used to go. To the fair, when, when the fairgrounds, before it got to be crazy people ever, I mean, a lot of ungodly people go there now. It's, it's dangerous to go there now. When I was a little kid, and they take him great big rosy looking apples, and they dip in that caramel, and they, and they bring, oh, it's not, and they dip it in there again. That's the way the anointing is. Praise God. I need a little bit more, and once it gets on you, it's, you can't get it off. Amen. It's the anointing that's on your life. It's just like that apple, and you're the apple of God's eye. God said, You're the apple of my eye. And because you're the apple of my eye, I'm going to put you on like caramel. I'm going to put you on like a, my God, I'm preaching now. I'm going to put you on like a, glove Michael just thought he had a good fishing hole there's other places to fish and here's my point there's some places you can go and you can throw those things on the water and just a few will come see the anointing will be greatest where the people are gathered and need it the most the anointing will be strongest where the people are gathered and hurting the most. That's where you need to be. Oh God, you put me in front of all these sinners with all these terrible people. That's where you need to be. Well, oh God, they're talking about me. They're, they think I'm crazy. They, they don't like me. It's all right. God said if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you also. But you're anointed this morning. And you know, I want to.